Welcome to GardenWise Adventures, my name is Malie, and today's video is a continuation of the last video that I did. In that video, I did some summer pruning for you, showed you what it looks like and how I do that, and then I was going to do the fruit tree tour all in the same video, but it turned out to be too long. So I am going to cut to the previously recorded video and show you the fruit tree tour that I did, and I hope you enjoy it. Now when I say food forest, you know, this, I count my entire yard as a food forest because I've scattered edibles all the way around. And I've done videos on almost every tree that we have here, but I wanted to kind of show you what they're looking like this time of year. So this is the first week in August. This is my medlar. The fruit is filling in really nicely. We're going to have a good crop off of it. Below it, we have an aronia bush, which is a chokeberry. It's also edible. And it's got a few berries on it, but this was just transplanted this year, so I wasn't expecting too much production. We have another one over here. I don't know if the berries are ripening, they're turning dark. This is a brand new one. This is a brand new bush that's been a little chlorotic, but I'm not expecting berries that I can eat off of this one yet either, but next year should be better. And then look at these strawberries. All of the strawberries have done really, really well. I've been hand watering these twice a week, fertilizing them with a liquid fertilizer once a week. And I've put them all the way around the edges of my property. The edges of all the path have a few strawberries scattered here and there. And they really like the treatment that they've been getting. They've needed the water and the fertilizer and really like it. Now my papa is also doing well. We've got quite a bit of fruit on it, more fruit this year than other years. This is about the time of year that it starts to ripen. It ripens by the end of August. The fruit has not gotten huge. They've stayed kind of small, but they are growing and they are here and they are edible. So this papa tree was planted in 2008, I think, or 2009. Actually, it was probably 2009 and it's fruited for the past six years. I usually get only about six fruit because I do not have a pollinator for it. And you can tell which way the wind blows by the shape of the tree. It really does not like the winds that come through here. So it's kind of stripped one side of the leaves and branches, but the side that is away from the wind is a little bit fuller. Now, I didn't think I was going to get fruit on this tree because the first set of flowers that came out on it were frozen. They're frozen to the point where they fell off, but we've, but it rebloomed and is setting plenty of fruit. So I'm really happy about that. There's another one up here. Yeah, it's gotten pretty windy. Sorry about that. So my mature tree is a Davis pawpaw. And right here we have a brand new sunflower pawpaw. This one has survived one winter. This is its second year. It's being protected by a shade cloth. And I'm thinking that next year it's not going to need the shade cloth. It is doing extremely well. I've upped the watering on pawpaw trees and now water them once a week instead of every two weeks. And they seem to like the water a lot better. This is a five-year-old seedling papa that has just struggled. It went through some drought and I think it's going to be torn out and replaced by a larger tree. We're just going to try again on this one because it really does not have any new growth on it. You know, it leafed out in the spring and it's just sat like this ever since. There might be something wrong with the roots. We've got more strawberries. This is a little low growing aronia or choke berries. This is brand new and it looked like it had formed berries previously but I'm not seeing any berries right now, but the berries on this one is also edible. This is a Slavatsky pomegranate. It's put on a ton of new growth. It didn't flower this year, but it's only its second year, so I'm expecting to see flowers next year. I protected it over the winter, and will protect it over the winter again this year, but I'm not gonna protect it as heavily as I do my figs because it's a little hardier, but I'm really excited to see fruit off of these trees. This is my Doris hazelnut. I had to put you know, a little string around it so that it could be held up from the winds. The winds really just rip through this area. It's got a lot of good new growth, not enough to do any summer pruning on it. 
but it's doing quite well. So I'm excited to see if we can get more growth on these next year. So this is a Doris. And then this one's a pollinator and it's called Lincoln. So their growth habit is a little bit different, but they will pollinate each other. And I'm really excited to see how these turn out. These are ground cherries. They're the, Peru the Peruvian ground cherries, not the normal ground cherries. There's two of them here. And they really struggled. They had a real problem with, with spider mites but they've grown back from the base and they're healthy now. I don't know if we're gonna have time to get fruit off of them, but we're gonna try. I'm hoping, hoping to see fruit off of these. It's really delicious. They're a little bit bigger than the regular pineapple ground cherries. And they just, they have a taste almost like papaya mango. They're really, really good. And here's another one of the little Peruvian ground cherries that's resurrected itself and looking a lot better. This is what, this is a Miss Molly ground cherry, or I call it the pineapple ground cherry. And we've got fruit that's just about to ripen. If you look, if you look down here, once that little papery husk falls off into the ground, sorry, it's having a hard time focusing. But when this falls off to the ground, it'll be ripe and ready to eat. And I'm excited because these are really tasty and we've got a ton of fruit on it. So I have this right next to my seating area so we can just snack on it. This is my tiny little yellow horn. It, is, it also has edible seeds eventually and beautiful flowers. So I'm excited to see how this one does. But it's only got a little bit of growth this year. This is its first year started from seed. And I did get it from a friend. I did not start it myself. Now this is the food forest in my backyard. We were just back here doing the pruning and things have really started to fill in. I love how the strawberry border is filling out. What I'm going to do is rake back the mulch and I'm going to bring in some compost to, to kind of see if I can help some of these runners root in. We've got serious issues with my golden currant. We're getting weevil damage, root weevil damage, all along the edges. And it's also, you know, the root weevils are also eating my, my little honeyberry. This is an Aurora honeyberry. So what I think I'm going to do is when it gets closer to fall, I'm going to order some of the nematodes that eat the grubs of the root weevils and see if we can stop the damage that way because it's kind of really making me sad. So we covered the pear, we covered, and we covered the pluots. And we do have some ripe blackberries. I've tasted them. These have gone bad. I missed those. And they're, they're kind of watery. They're, these are triple crown. I'm hoping next year's berries will be better, but they are growing in and looking beautiful. This little honeyberry that looked like it was dying back has started in with new growth. And I really like, you know, I got this from Honeyberry USA and they pointed out that it would go through a summer dormancy and look like it was going to die. And then it promised by fall that it would start to leaf out again. So they were correct. It started to leaf out. I'm going to let this continue to grow. And then hopefully next year it will, it will do a lot better. I think my blue banana honeyberry is also in its summer dormancy period because it's not looking very happy. None of my honeyberries look happy right now, but from what I've heard, this is what they do. Let me go show you my Borealis honeyberry and my bush cherries. So this is my Carmine Jewel bush cherry that's going to get moved next spring. And this is the Juliet bush cherry. These are new. They did not, they haven't even flowered yet. They're so new. But they're looking really beautiful and I think they will do well enough to maybe give us at least some flowers next year and maybe some fruit. This is also my front yard. This is the Borealis honeyberry and I'm looking forward to fruit off that one. I think I'm going to get two different 
think I'm going to get two more honey berries. So I've got early ripening berries, mid ripening berries, and then I, now I think I'm going to go look for some later ones. So we already discussed these figs. There's the unnamed variety and the Rondé Bordeaux, which looks exactly the same. So I'm wondering if this unnamed variety is actually a Rondé Bordeaux. It, the only issue is that Rondé Bordeaux is supposed to be an early producing variety and it's just barely starting to produce figs. So we'll see what happens with that one. This is a sea kale that's doing really nicely. My two little seedling papas are doing really well. This one is one that I grew from my seed from my own tree. And this one is seed that a friend grew from a tree that has been producing papas in our area. So we have two of them that are from local seed, which is really, I think, a major thing in Utah. Matter of fact, I think this is probably the only two locally produced papas in the state of Utah. I may be wrong. Let me know if you know of any others but I'm really excited about these and they're looking pretty good. I am almost ready to give up on my Arctic raspberries. They don't seem to like this area. I think their problem is the acidity of the soil. We just have really severely alkaline soil. They're quite iron, they're quite chlorotic. I've been hitting them with chelated iron and it's just not improving them. So I may give up on Arctic raspberries. Although maybe I'll just let them try again next year and see if they look the same and keep giving them the chelated iron. This is my ashwagandha. It's, you use the roots, it's an herb. You use the roots for tea. And it is just loving this area. It's putting along a lot of new growth. We have seven of them. The two back here struggled and almost died, but now we're getting new growth from the base. And this is another one that struggled where we're getting new growth from the base. So they're looking really good. I'm excited about these and excited to do harvest in the fall. And I'll do a video on that. This is my little Negron fig, Chicago hardy fig that we've covered in another video. This is my Nikita's gift persimmon. And we still have fruit, just two left. This one is looking really good. This one is starting to yellow, so I'm not exactly sure if this one will stay or if both of them will grow to maturity and stay. This is only its second year, but I'm excited about that at least. We'll see how it does. I've, I have noticed this tree needs a little bit more water. This entire area, I water once every week to every two weeks, just depending on how hot it is. And this seems to need twice as much water not to wilt. So I've been really watching this tree. This is another persimmon, a brand new one. This is the Ichi Ichikeikai, and I'll put the name on the screen because I'm sure I said that wrong. Newly planted, newly grafted persimmon. I didn't graft it, it came with a new graft on it, but it's finally starting to get new growth. So I have high hopes on, for this one. Now, these right here, the stakes that I have around it are a hose guide. Um, my hose, I use my hose through this area a lot and it tends to go over this area so I didn't want to kind of knock the top off of it. Over here is my squash area with my apples and my pears. We talked about the apples and the pears. The, these are, these are columnar apples and they're struggling. They're not getting the same type of new growth that all of the other apples did. But this was an older apple in the nursery, you know, it came in a nursery pot and I think they had overwintered this one. So I'm thinking they're just trying to get their roots settled. So we'll see how well these do. I'm, I'm watering these a little bit more just to make sure that they, just to make sure that they survive. Right here, we have my artichoke. It finally flowered, but I don't think I'm gonna use it for food because these, these little I don't even know what you call them. Calyx's petals or whatever. They're not the petals, but the outer leaves that you eat, they just, they don't have any substance to them at all. They don't look like they'd be good to eat. So I'm just going to let it flower. And when it's done flowering, I'll probably take it out. Squash are growing well. And I wanted to show you my roselle on the other side of this bed. Here's one roselle right here. This one I think is just too crowded to get, you know, really good growth on it. These are my Jerusalem artichokes getting ready to flower. 
this, these will eventually fill out this entire bed. But look at the growth on these roselle plants, especially this one over here. It seems to really appreciate the little bit of shade that it gets over here. So we'll see which ones flower, if any of them. Let me show you the one that's in the pot upstairs. So back in here, if we pull it out, this is a roselle that I overwintered from a cutting from last year. It seems to be growing quite well. It actually flowered once already and I harvested another calyx off of it. It was a really fat, nice calyx. So we're gonna be taking this one in over the winter, taking care of it, seeing if we can get more production off of it. Maybe one of these days I'll do a video on my citrus. This is an Australian red lime. It's getting new growth on it. It's looking pretty healthy no fruit on it at all which is okay because i just got it this spring we up potted it into a two gallon pot and it seems to be doing okay it's not suffering in the heat or anything now the one that's suffering in the heat is my avocado i've moved it into the shade and out of the shade we are getting new growth we are getting new growth on it it does take quite a bit of water but it just can't take our full sun and it doesn't grow if it's not in the full sun. So I, I'm hoping I don't have to give up on this. We'll keep trying. So this one's a Mexicola avocado. It's really good to see the new growth though. My ginger and turmeric is not doing well. This is a turmeric. I think it's just been too hot for it. This is the ginger. They've died back, but they're not completely dead. So we're just gonna keep going and keep trying with these. They seem to like a lot of fertilizer and a lot of water. I thought too much water was gonna rot them, so I didn't water them as much as I should have, but they seem to be doing okay. Well, that's not okay, but they are not dying at least. I'm hoping they'll recover a little bit more. We're getting new growth in lemons off of my lemon tree. So this is an improved Meyer lemon. We've got three little lemons on here. The color has vastly improved, although up here it seems to be yellowing again. This has taken so much fertilizer. I put in, once a month, I put in a granular fertilizer, usually Osmocote, and then weekly I alternate between citrus fertilizer and a liquid kelp. And then I also add a Cal Mag twi uh, twice a month. And if I don't do that, it all turns yellow like this. But if I keep up with the fertilizer regimen, then I do get new growth and I do get, and it does change color to a better color. So I think I'm starting to slowly figure these guys out. And hopefully, it, hopefully it'll look better next year. This is my Satsuma Mandarin Orange. We're getting new growth on this one too. I've never had the real color issue with these. It's been burning in the sun, but we are getting good new growth that looks healthy on it. And this one definitely requires the same amount of fertilizer as this one. So we're, we're definitely trying with citrus. So next is my jujube tree. That's this really tall tree behind me. This was also planted in 2009. And normally speaking, my jujube tree is my easiest going tree. It produces tons of fruit. I'll link a video up here of last year's harvest to show you how much I get off of it. But this year, for some reason, it's decided to drop all of the buds off the lower branches. So I've lost all the fruit, it seems like, off the lower branches. But I am getting some fruit on, on the upper branches and it's a little bit later this year. And let me show you what they look like. Now we are getting a lot of really good new growth. I'm trying to train some of them to be lower branches because all the lower branches have been cut off. Normally on a branch like this, I have a ton of fruit on almost every leaf node. But as you can see, there is no fruit on this branch. There's none on this one. And there's none on these. So all these lower branches have dropped their fruit. But it, I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if I can zoom in.
on the branches up near the top, maybe you can see it, there's little round balls. Those are jujube fruit way up high. So I don't know how much I'm actually going to get this year. There's a few more up here. I don't know if you can really see them. But we're going to get fruit higher up, but we're not going to get any fruit down lower. Even most of these branches seem to have lost their fruit. So that definitely is sad for me. I use the jujube fruit and love the jujube fruit probably more than all of the other fruit on this property. And I am not seeing much of it this year. But you know, it's given me heavy, heavy loads every year since probably, I think it started bearing fruit at second year in 2011. So I guess everybody needs a break, right? The service berries are done bearing. We preserved those and made some jam out of it and it was really, really good. They're looking good. And this one right here is being taken over by my hearty passion fruit. So let's go over and look at my May pop. This is the May pop on the south side of my property. I haven't seen any flowers yet, but I actually am getting buds. So we have a bud here and a bud here and there's several more throughout this bush. So what I'm hoping is I can actually get fruit this year. So it's being supported by a chain link fence and also by the service berry in the back. I do not have a very good trellis for it. Now I don't see any more in this bed, but what I've discovered is this is a very aggressive vine. We've gotten tons of little shoots up in this bed. You know, it's been growing under, it's been growing under my metal raised bed all the way up through and coming out on top. And I've been pulling those and I decided one day just to see if I could root any of them. So what I did is I pulled it, you know, I reached down as deep as I could, pulled it out from as deep as I could, dipped it in rooting hormone, stuck it in seed starting mix, and every single one of them rooted. So I did, I, I have sold those to other people in this area, but they're easy, easy to root. So I'm really excited about that. So we can start spreading around local May Pops. We've got another flower bed here. I'm really, I'm really excited to see these open. I'll, I'll post some pictures when they do open. They're really beautiful flowers. The last thing is my gooseberries. This gooseberry is a red one. It has not produced fruit for the last six years. So it's gonna be torn out this fall and replaced with another one. This is a brand new Invictus, still not ripe yet. Actually, I'm wondering if this is really truly an Invictus because Invictus is supposed to be green and it's supposed to ripen earlier. This one is obviously not green. This is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see what it tastes like when it's ripe. And just because I love these so much, this is my pineapple this is pineapple mint. It smells so good. This is also lime balm. It's another one that smells good. That's all mixed in with my very favorite chocolate mint. Now I know we're not supposed to mix mints, but I do it anyway. It turns out fine. So that's the end of my not so short tour. Once I get talking about my fruit, I tend to go on forever. Hopefully I didn't bore you, but I'm really excited We've got a lot of good things coming. I didn't show you my peaches, my plums, my nectarines because we don't have really any fruit on those. The, f the late freeze this spring pretty much eliminated most of the fruit off there. I maybe have 10 nectarines and 10 peaches, but at least I'll have 10 and I will enjoy every single one of those. The other thing I didn't show you is my cherry tree. There's nothing on it. We got about half sized harvest off that. I'll link a video up here so you can see the harvest of my cherry tree. Other than that, I'm just looking forward to the rest of this year. So I would love to hear what you're harvesting this year, what you're growing, if you're growing anything that's rare and unusual to your area. And if you like my videos, I hope you hit that like button, subscribe, share them with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.